cancer of the bladder. This is one of a series of videos that can be found on the website aboutcancer.com. There's an earlier video basically understanding bladder cancer and the staging system and outcome. This video is about the treatment options for patients with bladder cancer. And there's another video on radiation techniques and side effects. The best advice on treating bladder cancer can be found on the website of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. This can be accessed at nccn.org. This requires registration, but it's free to doctors and the public. And there are very detailed guidelines that are updated constantly on what's considered the standard of care or the state of the art on how to treat bladder cancer. So for instance, for the earliest stages, surgery, usually called a TUR, transurethral resection of the bladder, sometimes abbreviated TURB or TURBT. And then this is often followed by intravesical chemotherapy, which means a catheter is put back into the bladder. And then a chemical like mitomycin or an immunotherapy drug, such as BCG, is put into the bladder for a period. So the procedure starts with a cystoscopy. The urologist goes in. He then takes a device that curettes or cuts out or scrapes out or excises any visible bladder cancer. And then he would install a Foley catheter into the bladder and instill a chemical such as BCG or mitomycin, which would be designed to kill off any additional cells left in the bladder and to lower the, list, the risk of a relapse or recurrence or progression. Once the cancer has invaded the muscle, it's called muscle invading. This is stage T2 or higher. And most of these patients will require major surgery either a total or a partial cystectomy. This may be preceded by chemotherapy, so-called neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And there are studies that show that if chemotherapy is given prior to the surgery, that the results are better. There are various types of surgical procedures, which are all quite complex. Often it'll come down to whether a total cystectomy is necessary, removing the entire bladder, or on occasion, a partial cystectomy, whether the surgeon can remove just part of the bladder. The results with surgery are good but not great. In large single center experiences, there's a 45 to 60 percent five-year overall survival. The mortality rate after radical mastectomy, radical cystectomy used to be quite high, but now it's down to about three percent. But the complication rate with this type of a surgical procedure is still very high. 25 to 57 percent of patients will have some complication in the first 30 days. The outcome is based on the stage. Those that had a pathologic T2, which means the cancer only went into the muscle, have a smaller risk of relapse and a more favorable survival. If the pathology report shows the cancer has gone much deeper, then the risk of a relapse is higher and the survival rate is lower as noted. The other option for muscle invading cancer may be to use radiation, and radiotherapy is an option. There are several ways radiation can be used. One is called post-operative radiation, which means after the major surgery, the patient gets some radiation to lower the risk of a relapse or recurrence. There is evidence, such as this study, after cystectomy, patients who had high-risk cancer who got radiation, the control rate in the pelvis went up from 78 to 88%, and the overall cancer-specific survival went from 40 to 62%. The NCCN guidelines doesn't include post-operative radiation after a radical cystectomy, but they do recommend it be considered, at least, after a partial cystectomy. So they say consider radiation, but this is called a Category 2B guideline, which means it's somewhat controversial, and only in a patient who had a deeply invasive bladder cancer positive nodes or positive margins would they consider doing post-operative radiation. Perhaps a better idea from the guidelines would be what's called bladder preservation, using radiation and chemotherapy to cure the cancer and avoid major bladder surgery. And so this would be called a bladder preservation protocol. And even in T2 cases, which are relatively early, it's still considered a Category 2B recommendation, which means there's some controversy about this.
The so-called preservation protocol starts with a maximal TURB, which means the urologist should first scrape out all the obvious cancer. Then the patient should get radiation and chemo up to a moderate dose, 40 to 45 gray, and then the urologist should repeat the cystoscopy. If the patient is a complete remission, which means there's no sign of cancer, then they go ahead and complete the radiation. If there's still cancer that's grown back or still in there, it's recommended the urologist go ahead and do major surgery or remove the bladder. The question is, is it safe or effective to do a cystectomy after you've already done radiation and chemo? And this has been studied. For instance, in this study, they compared the outcome of patients who had a primary cystectomy. That meant that was the original procedure done, five years survival, 45%. Or those patients who they tried to do a cystectomy after the patient had not responded well to radiation and chemo. And this is called a salvage cystectomy. And the five-year survival rate is still about the same 42%. So combined modality treatment using radiation along with chemo to try to avoid surgery has been studied, particularly overseas. And the five and 10-year survival is not bad, 51 and 31% as noted here. The complete response rate is high, 60 to 80%. The Radiation Therapy Oncology Group, or RTOG, which is the largest research group for radiation, has combined a number of studies and is noted here. 80% of the long-term survival still had their bladder intact, which means they did not have to have their bladder removed. And when they pulled all the RTOG studies and combined the data, the long-term survival was not bad disease-specific survival, which means they were still alive as far as bladder cancer was concerned, was 71% at five years and 65% at 10 years. So as good as surgical results without having to remove the bladder. Despite this, uh, radiation is rarely used in the United States, only 10% of the time. In Europe or in the UK, this is much more commonly offered to the patient to do so-called muscle, muscle invading bladder cancer to do uh, bladder saving or sparing procedures. Perhaps there are more studies need to be done to show the surgeons that the results are about the same. So there are collected studies such as this, the overall five-year survival with surgery removing the bladder 43 to 50 percent. If chemo is given prior to surgery, the numbers are better as noted. But if the bladder is not removed at all and the patient gets so-called bladder sparing with radiation and chemo, the results are as good as surgery. And even in 10 year comparisons, the long term result in those patients who avoid a cystectomy it looks about as good as those who had their bladder removed. And there are more collected data, such as this large series of radical cystectomy, the 5 and 10 year survival rates appear to be the same as patients who had bladder preservation. So there may be more of a role for avoiding removing the bladder. If radiation is used, the results are much better if it's combined with chemotherapy. And there are studies such as this, the risk of a relapse in the pelvis is much lower, 29%, when chemo is added to the radiation, rather than if radiation is used alone, in which case 52% of the time the cancer grew back. And the overall survival is noted here, radiation alone in the 30s, and radiation in chemo, 51%. And there are various studies comparing, comparing different chemo drugs combined with radiation. Cisplatinin is probably the one used most commonly, as noted here, a high complete response rate and a good five-year survival. The other option with radiation are patients who are incurable and just receive what's called palliative radiation to see if this will at least improve the symptoms. And as noted, 71% of the time the symptoms are responded to radiation if a higher dose was utilized. This is one of a series of videos that can be found on the website aboutcancer.com.